You may well have heard of the Atkins diet or the paleo diet or indeed the juice cleanse because, of course, there are lots of different ways out there to try and lose weight. Some of them do work, but dieters are often prone to the so-called yo-yo effect where your weight fluctuates over the course of the diet. So just how do our bodies regulate our weight and what role does the brain play in this mechanism? And are we all equal when it comes to gaining pounds? Let's talk about that with our health editor, Julia Seeger, who's with me here in the studio. Julia, first of all, how is it that our bodies control weight? So first of all, it's important to understand that the organism is constantly trying to get back to a perfect equilibrium, to a balance, and it does so thanks to a variety of mechanisms of control and regulation, and the same goes for weight. Now, the body centers for weight uh, regulation is in the brain, in the hypothalamus, and this is where all of the information coming in from the body uh, is coming in and is being treated, and it tells us uh, what are the stocks uh, uh, of nutrients and energy available, but also what are the needs of the body. And what's interesting here is that our body's actually speaking to us throughout their day, but we don't know how to decipher that language, and perhaps we're just not listening anymore. So let me, Nadia, try to walk you through this type of language and what your body is telling you. So for instance, with the feeling of hunger, your body is telling you, I do not have enough energy to function. The tissues, the muscles need more food, need more nutrients. With specific cravings that we often witness with uh, pregnant women, for instance, it can indicate a very precise bodily need. So for instance, if you're craving orange juice, for instance, maybe it's because uh, you lack uh, vitamin C. Now with the sensation of being full, so when you're you're done eating and your, your stomach is, is really stretched out, well, this is to tell you that you've eaten too much, you've gone too far. And because the, the idea and the best um, state to try to reach is actually satiety. And today, people don't know how to recognize society, satiety. It's a state of non-hunger that you feel usually in between meals. And what happens when you reach that, when your body tells you, I have exactly what I need, not too much, not just exactly what I need to function is that it's going to release a hormone called leptin. And leptin is absolutely beautiful because that what that's what prevents you from snacking in between meals. And it's believed that people who have eating disorders today, in part, have a difficulty to connect with that leptin uh, hormone, which can then lead them to sometimes eat uncontrollably. Now, uh, it's important to understand that whatever you have in your plate, of course, is very important, but also the way that you eat and whether you eat in a very uh, mindful way is is also very important. Now, when we listen to you, some people might be under the impression that actually keeping your ideal right. body weight is kind of easy, that our body will sort of regulate and bring us there naturally. But obviously, that's not entirely the case for most of us. Um, and we're not all equal when it comes to the way that our body regulates weight. That's right, Nadia. We're not equal. And we're actually very different. And I think that's the, the main point here is to understand how different we are. Everyone has a different natural starting weight. Once again, where your body is trying to go back to, it tries to seek to return to uh, that, that certain weight. We don't have the same metabolism. You have people who have fast metabolism uh, with large, they're going to need a large amount of energy, for instance, to function and to maintain vinyl function. They tend to lose weight easily eat more and have a rapid transit, whereas people who have slow metabolism tend to consume less energy, lose weight, uh, have more difficulty with losing weight and have a slower transit. It's important to understand what type of metabolism you have to then be able to pick the diet that can work for you. It also evolves through time. As you grow older, your metabolism tends to slow down. I think we've all witnessed that. And uh, also, it depends on your level of stress. You also need to factor in genetics. Is that why we have certain diets that are based on blood groups? Well, that's actually very interesting. The hypothesis behind this diet that was um, developed by Peter Adamo, the American nutritionist, is based on the fact that each uh, blood type actually has a different chemical composition. And depending on what you eat and the chemicals that are in the type of foods that you eat, well, there are some combinations that are just not healthy. So it recommends eating only foods that suit your blood type. So as you know, blood types actually evolved through time um, and appeared uh, one after the other, starting with type O. This is the only blood type that existed back in the day when men were still hunter and gatherers. And hence, the diet tells you that you tend to tolerate uh, less grains, for instance, and that you should consume more animal proteins. Then you have blood uh, type A, 
which appeared later on with the uh, discovery of agriculture. So here it's, it calls for a more vegetarian diet. And then you have the, uh, the type uh, B and AB. And here you have a more a, a wider variety of, of foods that you can eat. So I think what's interesting here is to understand that there are a lot of factors that come into play when trying to lose weight. Uh, you don't have the same metabolism. You don't have the same natural starting weight. It's also a question of age and genetics, but what's really important is at least to try to eat in a very mindful uh, mindful way. We tend to eat in front of our computers, and you cannot eat in a mindful way if you eat in front of your computer and if you're just not concentrating on what you're actually doing. Lots of those messages, I feel like, directed at me personally. <laughs> not at all. I think the entire newsroom. <laughs> That's true as well, concerned. I imagine. Julia Seeger, thank, thank you very you. much.